Today, we're going to talk about 10 awesome effect or project ideas you can make using Blender. If you enjoy any of the ideas that I'm presenting or you'd like to see a full tutorial on anything that I'm showing here, let me know down in the comments or leave a like on the video. Also, if you want to make Blender easier, especially for those of you who work on music videos, check out my Director 3D plugin. It has over 100 3D models, awesome preset effects, procedurally generated templates to work with, and much, much more. So enough said, let's dive straight into the video. Number one is realism or surrealism 3D. So here are some great examples of this. This is Kane Pixels. He created these viral realism historical style footage, Attack on Titan videos, to create this cool realism mix. If you guys didn't know, Kane Pixels also went on to explode with the entire backrooms horror trend on YouTube using a similar formula. Here's another example of this. The Suicide Boys music videos, a lot of them are just normal footage, but in theory, it would be very easy to create something like this in 3D and then use that same sort of formula where you're giving it that gritty, realistic feel. And of course, it should be self-explanatory. You don't have to go down the dark, gritty, aesthetic route. You can still take the concepts of what I'm saying by blending 3D with different video aesthetics like VH just footage, for example, to make it feel more alive and realistic. So again, if you want a full tutorial on doing something like this step by step, let me know down in the comments. Number two is match cut real footage to 3D. I did something like this while working on a music video a while ago, and I really liked how it turned out. Essentially, you're making a quick transition where it changes from real footage to your 3D render. There's so many editing techniques like the freeze frame or the roto clone that I've talked about in the past in a music video context. So using that concept of a quick flash from real life to 3D is a great way to get started with this. Alternatively, you can go more advanced by seamlessly integrating the 3D elements with live action footage to get some really cool results. So let me give you some insight as to how you would start doing this as a beginner. To create a quick transition from real life to 3D, you wanna do your best to match the composition from the first frame to the next frame as best as possible. This is called a match cut, and if you're interested, I talk about doing this in my 10 ideas for After Effects video that I put out last week. So in your 3D software, you're gonna to wanna to recreate the environment and composition, starting out with primitive shapes just to block things off. There's a great free software called FSpy that can help a lot with this. It allows you to camera match from a still image. Once you've matched the camera settings, you can model using the frame of your video as a reference. Then add in whatever 3D effect you'd like. Again, depending on how in-depth you want to go, this can either be a super easy process or a difficult process. So if you'd like a full tutorial on this sort of thing, let me know down in the comments. Number three is create an environment. Creating an environment is pretty self-explanatory. I think it's one of the first things people who are learning 3D end up searching for. The reason I included it on this list is because of the advantage and the ease of use Blender has when it comes to making environments. I made a tutorial talking all about procedural generation using geometry nodes. We're moving towards a future of modular environment creation Everything down from the micro details like crowds to buildings to the larger macro landscapes of the world. Instead of having to hand sculpt all of them from scratch, you can use geometry nodes to build systems that make it more like you're putting together a Lego set where each thing is an interchangeable part. So I highly recommend you guys look into geometry nodes, watch some tutorials on it. It can save you a ton of time. And again, if you're looking for a plugin to easily procedurally create an environment, my Director 3D plugin has a city generator and a few more environments planned as additions for the next update. Number four is to create a 3D character. I've always been super interested in 3D characters. With 3D, you can either go for realism or stylization, which leaves a lot of room for creativity and design. In the context of a music video, taking your main actor and creating a 3D replica of them, animating it to do cool stuff, like some of these examples I'm showing on the screen here, it's always a super fun process and a super fun project to put together. Rigging and modeling a character with Blender is pretty simple compared to other 3D softwares. And alternatively, there's a ton of third-party plugins like Keen Tools, Face Builder, Face Gen, Daz, that can help you skip a lot of the tedious steps so you can get straight into the design phase. If you want to get started making a 3D character, I have dozens of tutorials showing how to make all types of characters in different styles. You just need to search Max Novak 3D character on YouTube and find the one you like. Number five is track 3D objects into a scene. So here's two awesome examples of this, Edward Av and Neo Liptis. You guys can completely transform your videos, create this sort of viral short content by mixing 3D and different effects in. Also, as a disclaimer, I'm pretty sure both of them use Cinema 4D, but in my opinion, it really doesn't matter what software you use to achieve something. They're all tools, and most of them allow you to do many of the same things. 
In the case of Blender, geometry nodes give you access to some really cool MoGraph effects that are pretty easy to set up and use. There's also the motion tracking aspect of Blender, which is pretty solid. And if you don't like using that, you can also transfer your tracking data from After Effects into Blender or use a third party tracking software. So there's a ton of different ways to get this ball rolling. If you guys are interested in mixing real life in 3D, there's an awesome tutorial from Stash that was posted recently, giving a ton of useful tips for photorealism in Blender. I highly recommend you guys check that out and I'll link it down below in the description. Number six is to create NPR animations. And if you guys didn't know, NPR stands for non-photorealistic. So this could be anything from cartoony, anime, pixelation, comic book style, something like the Spider-Verse movie that just came out. There's so many different stylized, non-photorealistic routes you can take to put a spin on your creation. Blender's ease of use when creating different stylized shaders, plus tools like Grease Pencil for drawing in your own details, make things very easy to get started. A lot of NPR animations feature simple animation techniques, which is great for beginners. Things like shape keys just for changing facial animations can really ease the time it takes to get into this. I like how this method can be easy, but it can also be advanced. For example, it's super easy to pop out some simple retro or pixelated renders using a plugin or some different tips and tricks in the render settings and materials. But alternatively, you could go down the full road of crazy stylization like in these 3D shorts. So it really depends on what you want out of it, but there's so much room to be creative and create something really fun doing this. Number seven is Grease Pencil. So I mentioned this in the last example. You can use Grease Pencil to draw little details onto your 3D model. You can also use Grease Pencil to hand draw animations using a 3D model as a reference, which is super useful. And again, like in the last example, there's many different ways to go about this. Some are simple and some are more advanced. If you're gifted at drawing, you'll be able to fully take advantage of this and you'll probably love Grease Pencil. If you're not that great at drawing, there's still a lot of cool things you can do, like simple line animations. I can draw one line with Grease Pencil, and then instead of having to draw multiple lines after that, if I want some animated lines in my video, I can add modifiers, I can add geometry nodes to basically do the animating process for me. Number eight is AI with 3D. There have been a lot of new AI 3D workflows popping up that allow you to do some really cool things. You can use AI image generators or AI plugins to turn images into 3D models. You can create 3D characters quickly using sites like Monster Mash and animate and customize them in Blender. I created a full tutorial on that recently if you want to check that out. There's also different integrations for AI like Stable Diffusion that work with Blender. You can pose a character in Blender and then the AI image will generate your prompt based on the pose from Blender as a reference. This is super crazy. In theory, all you have to do is composite something together using primitive shapes or take the base shape of a character and pose it in the way you want. And then you let AI do the work and dream over it. I know a lot of people may be off put by this and say it's taking the creativity out of 3D. And in many ways, I agree with you. What I'm more excited for is the ease of use that comes with AI workflows. For example, there's this new Cascador, I think you pronounce it, software that utilizes AI to make animating from scratch much easier. It has a plugin that seamlessly integrates back into Blender. Things like that can save you hours of time and are definitely worth looking into. Number nine is to create simple editing assets. This is a great advantage to learning 3D, especially if you are a beginner. There's so many basic things you can use Blender for that other softwares can't do. For example, creating simple editing assets. With video editing, you're very confined to using what you find for free or what you pay for in terms of the clips that you use to overlay or composite into your scene. If you learn the basics of Blender, it gives you the freedom to create any sort of 3D object or effect, quickly render that out, and then pop it into your editing software. Say you want to transition where there's glass smashing and shooting across the screen. Well, with Blender, you can easily set that up using physics and simulations to make it your own. You can control the lighting, the timing, the speed, and the composition. Without that skill, you're stuck using the same green screen glass mash that you got for free, or again, paying for pre-made assets. So you can see that there's clearly an advantage by learning some of these basic 3D tools, just so you can create things yourself and not have to rely on others to put together what you want to make. And then number 10 is to create graphics or intro titles with 3D. Again, a great one for beginners. If you're doing some sort of product work, if you're doing some sort of client work, being able to offer the service of turning a logo into 3D or turning graphics for your movie into 3D is a super useful tool. With Blender, you can use modifiers to bend, twist, you can add lighting, you can add different materials and shaders, you can make it cinematic, you can make it stylized, 
It's all extremely easy. All you really need to get started is a vector file, which you can get from Adobe Illustrator. And yeah, that's about it. Those are my 10 ideas for Blender, which I think you should look into. The title says Effect Ideas, but these are more broad directions and thought processes that I think can really help you guys when it comes to creating your own vision. It's up to you to figure out ultimately what you want to make. I'm just trying to give you guys some direction and show you guys some ways that can make things easier or give you some inspiration along the way. So I hope you found this video useful. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.